I'm Colin. I'm Naoto. We're the Ramen Brothers, and we're here to tell you that Square Knives Rock! Today, we're gonna talk about the Chinese cleaver, we're gonna talk about the Nakiri. These are square knives, and as we said in the intro, Square Knives Rock, but the types of knives that we're talking about are a little bit different. So we'll talk about the differences between them, and then we're gonna cut a bunch of stuff, we'll show you how they work, and we'll make some recommendations about what might be right for you. I'm Naoto, I'm the Nakiri champion today. I'll represent Nakiri. Back when Nakiri was so popular, every household in Japan had at least one Nakiri. I primarily use Nakiri for vegetables like green onions, cabbage, lettuce, Whenever it has a lot of like thin leafy vegetables, these are great for them. I'm Colin and I am the Chinese cleaver champion today. I use one of these for everything. In Chinese style, this is a chef's knife. It's meant to do a little bit of everything, whether that's vegetables or meat, depending on the size, thickness, thinness. So like super thin one, awesome for slicing, dicing, mincing. This one's really nice and light, all the way up to things like this, a true dual purpose cleaver that can cut bones, can still slice, dice, mince, but it's more of a chopper. It's better for less fine work. I can mince garlic with this, but that takes a lot more effort and practice, way easier to do something like that with a knife like this. So let's talk about the uh, you know differences between the Chinese cleavers and the Kiri, and also some similarities. Yeah, they've got a lot of stuff in common in a way. They both have this kind of rectangular shape, but the Chinese cleaver tends to be quite a bit bigger, whether it's one that's actually from China, this one's from Hong Kong, or whether it's the Japanese version of a Chinese chef's knife, a chukabocho, they still have this kind of rectangular shape. The edge profile is a little different though. With the Chinese cleaver, it's kind of flat in the middle, and then it curves on either side like a smile. It's a very happy knife. Well, the nakiri usually comes in, typically comes in like this size and shape. About 165 millimeters to probably 180 millimeters height usually sits around this it is pretty flat traditionally if you look at the nakiris like um moritaka nakiris it's super super flat lots of knife makers these days they try to make a slight modifications with a bit of carve at the tip so that it has a bit more versatility some knife makers like masakagi blacksmiths they made it actually a lot taller so for those of you who have a bit bigger, I guess, knuckle than the typical Japanese hand, you have more place for knuckle to be cleared. So something like this is quite common, but usually, again, comes in a very similar shapes and thickness because nakiri basically means veggie knife or leafy veggie knife. Choi is the uh, leafy veggies, right? Um, it's really, really designed to do the uh, vegetables. But I have to actually say this, it is not limited to the vegetables. You can cut the meat with it, uh, no bones, but you can definitely cut the chickens in portions for stir fries or anything like that. So it's not limited to the vegetables. When it comes to Chinese cleavers, the extra length is pretty helpful if you are wanting to cut bigger things, whether that is you know, portioning out a pork loin or chopping up a cabbage. The extra height is great if you have a big mound of parsley that you're chopping because it doesn't kind of like hop over the top. It also means that there's more knife for you to deal with. So this is where I think the Nakiri has a real advantage. I know I'm supposed to champion the Chinese cleaver, but uh, Nakiri is smaller, more agile, a little bit easier for people to handle. When I first started using a Chinese cleaver, I got one of these. It's a pretty big cleaver. They call this a civil and military knife. That's a very literal translation in Cantonese. It's a manmo uh, dou. What that means figuratively is that it can do fine jobs like slicing and chopping uh, little things, but that it can also do rough jobs, like it can go through some bones. With one like this, you know, it's got a pretty thick spine, it's thicker at the back and thinner at the tip. You could comfortably chop up uh, raw turkey thighs with this, but I probably wouldn't take it to a pork bone. And then because the front is a little thinner, you know, you can get in and I've minced garlic with this and absolutely you could cut all kinds of vegetables, whether that's a green onion or a pepper or cucumbers. Uh, really any type of meat. Uh, it's super, super versatile. I wouldn't say that a knife like this is the best at anything, but it is the best at doing a little bit of everything. I think the Chinese cleaver or the to cleave thing is a little bit misnomer, right? Isn't it? The uh, somewhere definitely to cleave something or to have a really big weight, but some are not. And right, it's, it's not really, everything is not really 
cleaver, is it? No, uh, Naoto's right. Chinese cleavers come in a variety of sizes and most importantly, thicknesses. So if you want to start using a cleaver, you need to ask yourself, A, do you want to cut bones? And B, if so, how big of a bone do you ever want to cut? If you never want to cut bones with your cleaver, get something like a mulberry knife, uh, Song Do. It is called that because it's as thin as a mulberry leaf, like super, super thin. You can't cut bones. In fact, I wouldn't even use this for going through the joints of a chicken. This is very thin and delicate and you chip it doing those kind of jobs. So as much as Chinese cleavers have this reputation for being the one knife that does everything, it depends on the knife. With one like this, this is Japanese steel, so it's a little harder than what you get in the Chinese ones, but it's not quite as hard as the knives that Naoto is going to be using. It's mono steel, it's one layer. And I would use this to go through the joints of a chicken or maybe through some chicken ribs. You can kind of use it like a Japanese Honosuke. Something like this. This is also a Chukabocho. Uh, it's made of a fairly tough steel, mono steel. It's a little thicker than the other one I was just looking at. I've chopped up plenty of chicken thighs with this. I've never chipped it doing that, but I wouldn't take it to a turkey thigh. It's just not up to that task. And then the big bad boy, as I said earlier, you can chop some turkey thighs or goose thighs, but maybe not like a pork bone. So you pick the Chinese cleaver based on how many different things you want to do. And the one that's really thin, if you're not cutting bones, it's going to cut a lot better on, especially things that are dense, like, you know, carrots and potatoes and stuff like that. Let's, let's, let's grab one of those and see how they work. Go to. Ah, okay. Go on. Thank you. Aya. I love these guys. The uh... <laughs> This carrot's been doing crack. Say no to crack, kids. All right. So how are you going to hold the nakiri? It's like a more traditional, uh, I guess, pinch grip. You try to find a spot that is around, like basically like the, the balance point and you put your index finger and wrap the other fingers around them. This is really, you know, comfortable. It's pretty light knife. You probably wouldn't be tired after cutting a whole bunch of stuff. Really the basic way of using the Kiri is you don't cut this way. Instead, you want to just keep the edge, I guess, parallel to the uh, cutting board and you just want to push it forward. Try to use the whole blade. So this is how you want to use the Nakiri. And because it's very flat, especially almost like about half or um, two thirds from the heel, it is pretty easy to do a Julianne cut without getting, we call it the accordion vegetables. So when you're chopping vegetables, the accordion vegetable that Naoto was mentioning there is where they're all connected on one side like a paper doll. So if you have a curvier knife, like a Western style chef's knife, a gyuto in Japanese, you need to rock a lot. And if you don't rock all the way through, you got to pick up your vegetables and they're connected on one side like this. That's a pretty rough, uh, <laughs> rough accordion vegetable there. Right. And now I, I was exaggerating. Well, yeah. I, I had to really <laughs> try really hard because, you know, it's really hard to make it accordion vegetables with the nakiri. Yeah. And same thing with the Chinese cleaver, that flat edge is going to hug the cutting board. And when you have contact between the edge of your knife and the cutting board, that's where you get all the way through the vegetable. With uh, the Chinese cleaver here, the edge profile is flat in the middle and curvy. So I'm probably going to line it up in the front part behind the corner here and aim for the back. But same as Naoto showing with the Nakiri, push forwards and slide down. Maybe I'll uh, cut a little flat spot off and stabilize my vegetable. And then even though this is a pretty big piece of carrot, it's going to go through really nice and even, right? When you see people moving really fast with these type of knives, it doesn't look like they're sliding, always sliding. So I'll go a little bit faster here and you can see that it starts to look like it's up and down, right? If I'm chopping and I go really fast, it starts to look like it's up and down. It's not, I'm still always sliding. A sharp knife cuts by sliding and I can touch the edge of this knife, right? And I'm not gonna get cut, but if I just press it down, I'm not really using the sharpness, I'm using my own force. If you slide it, that's how you unlock the potential of your knife. Alrighty, so I mean the uh, Nakiri is great, the, uh, it is pretty nice wide, um, it's got more space compared to say Santoku or the um, Gyuto. So you can scoop up food and put that in the uh, thing there. But when it comes to this though, 
the guy next door may have a bit of advantage. The extra height on a cleaver is one of my very favorite things about it because scoopage. Being able to scoop a whole bunch of stuff all in one go. Let me see if I can get all of this. Yeah, there it is. Is really much more convenient. I think if you're really doing a high volume of chopping, having that scoopage just makes it a lot quicker. Uh, and I've sold a few of these to people who are working in restaurants and you know prep cooks who are really chopping a ton of stuff and have pretty good knife skills you know think about one of these because every time that you have to make three trips with your guto to scoop up something and i could have done it in one trip with this that's time and time is money when you have uh you know 35 pounds of onions to chop right there's this way too <laughs> cabbage been ha handed over um Silver cabbage, traditional Japanese cooking, we do uh, cut them very, very fine. Fine julienne's like a, um, even finer than the uh, coleslaw. Like, you know, if you think about coleslaw, uh, we cut them a lot thinner. So, the, uh, I'm just gonna show you the, uh, I'm gonna give half to Aww. Colin here. Sharing is caring. Traditionally, this is how we cut the uh, cabbage uh, with nakiri. Just do a sliding action. If you have the um, tola nakiri, like Masakagi, this is when those tola nakiri comes really, really handy because you get to do the uh, this cut. Traditionally though, I will show you the more traditional way of cutting because we actually break it apart. It's easier, right? <laughs> so we actually take like that, then squish, then we do a fine cut. It does have a bit more control. I don't have to lift too much. Just do the very quick sliding action. You can use them for salad and anything like these. Great thing about Nakiri this size is that it's really easy. It's just maneuverable, I guess. It's like really easy to handle. You don't have to lift up as much. It's and when you're cutting something like this, this comes super, super handy. Yeah, so when you're cutting stuff that is kind of tall, and especially if you're trying to shred it as fine as we're trying to shred it, or if you're cutting herbs, right? Uh, if you're cutting a big mound of parsley, if you have a smaller knife, they can have a tendency, and of course this isn't a kitchen knife at all, but they can have a tendency to kind of hop over top as you're trying to cut stuff. This is totally the wrong knife for the job, but like I'm, my knife is getting lost in the thing that I'm cutting. And then if I have a big pile of stuff that I've cut, it can kind of fall back over the other side. Not ideal. When your knife is this tall, yeah, you get lots of knuckle clearance and like those pieces aren't gonna hop over. Who needs a scoopage? Ah, well now, now we gotta, now we gotta fight because you had to put your knife down and you can't see this team, but there's, um, oh, this guy's gonna show you. I don't know. I don't know about this know, method. We, we showed how to handle the bigger stuff like cabbage or the carrots. Now we're gonna show how to handle those smaller stuff. You know, both knives do the pretty good job, I guess, on the, uh, on those smaller jobs. When it comes to a Chinese cleaver and garlic, uh, you saw me take the peel off where I just kind of smashed it and put it off. And then I could do this, you know, much more fine and brunoise and maybe I'll do it a couple of different ways. But often, especially if I'm in a rush, I'll just take and kind of push the spine of the knife down a little bit and smoosh. And then I'm most of the way there, right? And then go one way and then I will Clean that off and then rotate that around 90 degrees and go the other way. And that's pretty finely minced. It's not the most even, like there's definitely more even ways of doing this. Also scrapage, not just scoopage. Never scrape the board with the edge of your knife. Very bad for it. Or, or do if you want to come to knife where and get your knife sharpened more often, like that's great for business. Uh, but if I were to do it uh, a little bit cleaner and nicer, I have this piece, if I hadn't just smashed it or like peeled the stuff off more cleanly. 
do it into little kind of slices and then again rotate and go the other way. With the Chinese cleaver and I think with the Nakiri as well, they are flat but they're not like perfectly flat, right? So if you are not satisfied that you've got it as fine as you would like, you can do a little bit of the kind of crisscross, applesauce, slidey, mincy thing. You don't want to overdo it because like you end up with more of a paste and uh, there's better ways of making paste, I think, like a garlic press. But that's getting real super fine, so I'll stop there. Nato? Alrighty. Well, the, uh, I'm gonna show you how I usually mince garlic at home. I actually cut it like, um, you know, like, whatchamacallit, the uh, dice in the garlic. Oh, sorry. Like a dice in the onion. I just cut it vertical and I do make it little horizontal cut. Then all you have to do is pretty nice and uh, nice and even, pretty small chunks. Um, the smaller stuff like these, uh, nakiri is really easy to kind of um, have a control of. The, you get to see where it's cutting and also like small making an incision, I guess, um, is really easy to do. And of course you can do this way if you want to as well. So we've been given a serious challenge. Uh oh. And I guess we're gonna compete each other to do a dice of onion. Okay. A half. Yep. Mincing a garlic. Mm -hmm. And julienne a whole carrot. Gotcha. So let's see who wins the spring. Can I do it one more time? Because I just realized, like, I'm just making shit up, but I actually know kung fu. <laughs> I know kung fu. Show me. <laughs> May the best square knife win. Two, one, go. All Colin's using a different technique. Colin worked in very crappy restaurants and doesn't know the proper way of doing this. Small Collins pull the head. Well, look at how big of his like dice yeah, is, right? Very medium. Yeah, right? That is catching up. Ah. That's, a smart way. That's not a Julianne Collins. <laughs> What do you mean? What is that? It's called a baton. What is that? that is a baton. <laughs> like I said, I never went to cooking school, so you're using all these fancy French words. Like, what do you call that in Chinese, Nathan? How can, how can you do this to me? All right, done. You call that Julianne? And you, wow. Are we allowing them? Hey, come on. If that carrot is in my Chinese takeout stir fry, I will be so pissed. <laughs> Can you imagine ginger beef and you just get a bunch of these? Right? <laughs> right? I think I've been to that restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Bit more proper Julianne. All right, Colin, <laughs> you get you get big bonus points for speed, um, but now to you the all around winner for actually knowing what the cuts are, so. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Although, to be fair, I think I would have already have stir-fried my dinner by the time Naoto was done <laughs> cutting, you know? Just because well, we got to be competitive. Hey, Naoto's way better than me. Hey, it's, it's I, I, I admit defeat. <laughs> it's going to take so much more to cook these pieces. Well, man, not if you got second. a 200,000 BTU wok burger. <laughs> you think I'm going to mess around here? Look at how big these things are. Ain't no one got time for that. I'm hungry. All right, so we've talked a little bit about these two different types of knives. We cut a bunch of stuff. We had a fun little competition. Let's have some closing thoughts and just kind of sum up what we've been talking about here. The cleaver, which is my favorite knife shape. In fact, I like to say it's the greatest knife shape of all time, is bigger and badder, but it's also a lot more knife to use. I think for most people, who are getting started with Japanese knives, who are building their knife skills, home cooks, an Akiri is probably a better choice. It's smaller, it's more agile, it's 
the best for chopping vegetables. And you know, that's a kind of a good thing when, when you just want a really good knife for all of your everyday chopping. I totally agree. The, um, you know, it's really great for the additional knife. It's like, it, it's gonna be your veggie chopper. You can do the uh, meat cutting with the nakiri as well. If you're look and looks pretty authentic as well, right? If you're looking for like a Japanese knife, nakiri is a great choice. But having said that, Chinese cleaver is fantastic shape as well as you saw him handling it and making a little bit of bigger chunks. Anyways, <laughs> Ooh, jokes <savage> aside, burn. <laughs> jokes aside, if you already have a nakiri and try to add to your collection, Chinese cleaver is definitely a fantastic knife to add to your collection. Yeah, I think everyone should have both of these knives. I use my nakiri all the time when I'm making a salad or I'm making a side dish. Because for me, if I'm making a full meal, I want the extra length. So that if I'm cutting uh, bigger pieces of meat or like I want the extra height, if I'm cutting bigger cabbages and piles of herbs, I do like having the corner on the front for slicing. If you are doing a lot of volume prep, the scoopage. <laughs> We've been talking about it throughout this whole thing. The scoopage is awesome. I think if you already have a Nakiri and you want something a little bit bigger and maybe a little bit more versatile, then you can get a Chinese cleaver. If you already have a Chinese cleaver and you want something a little bit lighter and more agile, you get a Nakiri. Everyone should have both. I don't think there's any downside to this. Scoopage. Is that food's less likely to pile up over your blade? Scoopage. As you're, you know. <laughs> <laughs>